These Palestinians are running to show the world how Israel restricts their movement through occupation, settlements, a network of checkpoints, and the separation wall. And even when they do find a route, they often face violence. Being a marathon runner in the occupied West Bank is a challenge not just because of the distance, but because of the Israeli occupation that restricts Palestinians' movement and traps them within a network of checkpoints and walls inside their own territory. We don't have space to run in Palestine. We don't have the places to run a full marathon, full 42 kilometers, because everywhere you run or go, you're facing a wall, you're facing a checkpoint, you're facing obstructions from the Israeli occupation. Jalal was born in Jerusalem. For him and many other Palestinian athletes, living with the Israeli occupation makes it hard for him to pursue his passion. When I run, I, obviously we have problems with the Israelis. We run sometimes in the cities of the West Bank, in Bethlehem, uh, in Ramallah. We are limited in our running spaces. We have to conduct our run in a way that is, uh, we have space to run. But at the same time, we cannot cross checkpoints. We cannot do a run at the beach, for example, or to do a run in Jerusalem as one team. For Jalal and his sports group, Right to Movement, it's not just about running. It's about freedom and solidarity. On June 4th, 2021, Right to Movement ran through the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood of occupied East Jerusalem, where Israel is trying to forcibly expel Palestinian families from their own homes. What should have been a solidarity run with his teammates ended up taking a very different turn. We ran this peaceful run uh, for three, four kilometers before we reached Silwan. We reached Silwan, we were celebrating there, we were having our celebrations at the finish line in the very heart of Silwan neighborhood of Batn al Hawa. Everyone is happy, drinking water, saying hi to each other and saying hi to friends. And out of nowhere, of course, we see a group of Israeli forces raiding our um, finish line area, which resulted in batons and sound grenades being thrown into the crowd. Everyone's running around, panicking. The Israeli forces just charged into us. I had finished the run very quickly. I was one of the first runners to finish. I had my water, I was eating my dates, um, just uh, saying hi to friends. My legs are still uh, warm from the run, but when the Israeli forces charged and attacked our finish line, uh, they were hitting everyone indiscriminately. And I got hit multiple times with their batons on my legs even though I was very apparent in my running gear at the time. But the Israeli forces, all I saw from them was hate from their eyes. Hundreds of thousands of Palestinians fled for their lives in 1948, taking nothing but their loved ones with them. Israeli military law stripped many Palestinians of any rights to their own property if they were not inside their home during or after the Nakba, even if they were just visiting a neighboring town. And year after year, Israel has taken away more and more of Palestinians' right to movement. Israeli military rule prevents most Palestinians in the occupied West Bank from traveling to Jerusalem unless they have special permits that are difficult to obtain. In 2002, Israel began constructing a separation wall inside the occupied West Bank, cutting off thousands of Palestinians from their families, their jobs, and the right to move freely. The wall, plus military checkpoints and a network of illegal settlements, make marathon planning a challenge. In Bethlehem, the route that we choose here from the Church of Nativity, we have to do the route twice, the whole route twice, so we can get the 42 kilometer mark. Because otherwise, there is not much space that allows us to run uh, freely and comfortably in the city. We always have to pick routes and cram and do loops and circles around certain areas so we can get the distance we want. Otherwise, if you're in one direction, one area, we are blocked by a wall. Sometimes we, we have a route that goes through the valley outside of Jerusalem that goes to Lifta, destroyed village of Lifta and then back. We have a route that goes around the village of Sataf, one of the villages which were destroyed in 1948. It's a very beautiful village, very beautiful area, but at the same time, running that route makes us feel connected to the, to the area, to the Palestinian families who lost uh, their villages, their towns uh, in 1948. And we, we pick routes in Jerusalem that are convenient for every, the whole team. Of course, it's a city. It's difficult to organize a good run in Jerusalem, but every route we pick and choose has a symbolic meaning for us Palestinians. It's a place or an area that was depopulated or 
had our people kicked out of it at some point. Nothing about our life was normal, but that's the way we grew up. We, we would experience tear gas as young children in cars. We would experience uh, bullets, we would hear shootings, we would see uh, the stories of martyrs, of people who were killed by the Israeli occupation forces. Our childhood growing up, it was never normal. We, we actually lived through a form of war and we still do. It's just that we became, with time, more desensitized to what, uh, what's going on. Through running, Jalal may have found an outlet, but there's always a void for him. He sometimes drives past his ancestral home where his grandfather was forced off his land in 1948. For Jalal, every time he visits this area, it's emotional. We're now in Al Qatamun neighborhood. This is uh, one of the West Jerusalem neighborhoods that was ethnically cleansed of Palestinian families in 1948. My grandpa used to own a house here. This used to be a one floor villa, a small house. And now, after they came back 20 years later, they found out there's been additions built up over it, and new Jewish families live, live here as if they own the place. The state has given them the right to live here and has not given us any right to claim back our property that was stolen from us in 1948. Hajj Suleiman Musa Abu Khatir. This is an extract from the Register of Deeds. It has my grandpa, uh, grandfather's name on it for the property that is described right here. Even though my father's family have been in Jerusalem since before Israel was even created, but just being in Jerusalem in the wrong area, being in the eastern part instead of the western part, when 1948 Al-Nakba happened, it meant that they were not present according to Israeli law, which legalized the theft of our property. Some Palestinians, like Jalal, can only see their ancestral homes from the street. For others, refugees forced out of the land that became Israel, they only have their house keys and memories. Despite the obstacles that Jalal has faced as a Palestinian, as a stateless Jerusalemite, and as a runner, he's determined to keep going, trying out even more routes throughout his homeland. Even though he has the pain from his injuries when he was beaten by Israeli forces, he says he'll keep reaching for the finish line. Running is my choice it's my escape, it is my therapy. Running for me is, is more than just the sport of running. I do not run to compete or run to win medals or anything like that. I run for myself, for my own mental health. I run to stay healthy, to stay on track of what my physical needs for my body are. And I run to keep my mental state stable and happy. I feel my meditation through running is like others choose yoga or choose other uh, ways to meditate, I meditate through running. It's an important part of my life that I choose to, um, to stick to, to be honest.